So where are we going today, Mr. Boo? Today we're going to... <gasps> Actual position. Alos. Allo pizza. Allo rim. Allo Robert in Monton. Hi, welcome back to me and Monami. And today we are taking you to one of our all-time favorite places on the whole of the French Riviera. It is a thousand square meter world of wonder, cabinet of curiosities, junkyard of wonderment. It is Allo Robert in Monton. So, Allo Robert is somewhere that I discovered by accident about, oh God, 16 years ago when I was um, not driving but still riding my old antique Solex and I just used to ride it up and down the Riviera and try and find things that interested me. And I went on this back street in Monton uh, expecting to find nothing and I saw what looked just like a sort of bog standard antique shop. And I wasn't going to bother but then I peered sort of around the doorway and looked inside and saw this incredible glamorous sort of almost glamorous steptoe yard of curiosities. There was everything there from old cars, old car parts, um, shop fronts, interiors of shops. To some extent, it looked like a sort of cinema set. Uh, there were antiques. There was a cockatoo. In fact, there were two cockatoos in a cage. Uh, there was a bird, uh, there was a bird pond. There was a fish pond. There was everything going on. And since then, whenever we go to Monton, if we get our timings right, we've, we've gone in. Now, they've always had big signs up saying no filming, so we've never dared film. But anyway, um, last, uh, well, not last night, two nights ago, we wrote to the gentleman who runs it, a man called Patrick, and we said, can we come and film? And he said, sure. So today, we are going to take you to this place. It is truly remarkable. And we're also going to go for a spot of lunch in Monton because it promises to be very soon a blue sky day. And, uh, well, you can't beat a bit of Monton. So um, sit back and enjoy the ride. to go to Monton, not just because I really like Monton, but Monton's where I'm going to be doing my um, driving test in, in a few months' time when I've passed my, uh, what's it called, Green Cross Code? The Code, yeah. The Code. Mr. Boo's been testing me on signage and how to drive and what to do if you see a granny in the road and that kind of thing, haven't you? Yeah, just honk. Honk. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's... it's uh, I thought about trying to find where the, the driving instructor does his thing and I could follow him and see what, what he asks you to do. Oh yeah, good idea. Do you think that's possible? So I'd see where he'd make me do a, a you know, a wheelie or whatever they make you do. I don't know if they're going to make you do wheelies, maybe like a three-point turn or something. Three-point turn, handbrake turn and, and, and handbrake stop and, <laughs> and, and that can't, it's going to go well, I can tell you. <laughs> but I've been, I've been practising my, my, my uh, my green cross code and then I've got to go into Nice and do a test of that and, and then hopefully if I pass that uh, but I may need a translator uh, although a friend of mine said he did it without a translator and he speaks not a word of French well even less than me um, uh, and then I can have my lessons and then finish up in Monton. Look at this curious little vehicle isn't that uh, it's kind of, it's got two seats, there's a twizzy over here, it's all, and another twizzy there. It's all happening in uh, Cap Dye, the uh, electric microcar capital of the Riviera. Oh. oh, there's a man with a stick. Best stop, best stop. Well done. 
Hey? Well done, you're really learning. <laughs> yeah. Mammoth stick means stop. I could say that. If they said, if a mound's holding a thing up, <laughs> do I stop? I'd say, yes, I stop. We? Oh, and then it's, now he's green, I'd say. What do I, what's the word for go? Jesus. Hey? Uh, you, you could say, j'avance. Yeah, I'm trying to go forward. So I'd say to my instructor, monsieur, j'avance. Not my instructor, my tech's gonna go well. The odds of me passing this are uh, negligible. February uh, is is the time of events down here on the Riviera, isn't it? it it's, it's is. you know it was obviously the Nice Carnival, the Lemon Festival, the historic Grand Prix, etc. Uh, well, sorry, the Monte Carlo Rally. All all attempts really to sort of kickstart the tourist season early, um, so that people don't have to wait till Easter. They're like the Blackpool illuminations of the French Riviera. They are. We're getting people here out of season. We were up here. Yeah, see oh. the Citroen Amiga there, park side on. Missed it. Look, it's there. I got mesmerised by the fair. I like the fair. I didn't know they had a big fair for the yeah. Lemon Festival. It's all happening. Look at this pixel game. This looks very like the fair they have in Cannes at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> to me. What do you think? It's quite it's a big deal. Right? It's, there's a lot of it. Well, it's, it's taken up a half a car park. Oh, that's a disaster. It's our charging car park. Um, but we have heard one of our subscribers kindly messaged and said, down in this car park over here, there are 10 chargers. Now, Mr. Boo thinks it's quite a, the Sable, that's it. Quite an expensive car park. But, so we're going to try this one first, because this is reasonable and uh, we know where it is. But if this is not available, we'll have to go there. And then we shall, um, Try and get to um, Alo Robert because it closes at 12 for lunch, I think, doesn't it? Or is it 12.30? Oh, look, there's a space. Perfect. Our, our usual space, our usual table. I'm going to pull into here. I, 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 it's our lucky space. This. Boom, 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 boom. Next to Darth Vader. Boom. Oh, you can't get out. I'm always doing this, aren't I? Let me just pull it back a bit. Right, let's get sorted and let's take you now to uh, Alla Robert. Come on, let's go. It's up behind the market, sort of, uh, well, by what we think is possibly the world's smallest branch of Gallery Lafayette, which somehow miraculously clings on here in. Uh, Montom. Well, this is the said branch of Gallery Lafayette. And then if you just carry on up this hill, you will see a little sign next to Darty. And that is where Alo Robert is. So, just up here, past the old Darty, we will arrive at uh, the emporium known as Alo Robert. So, here we are, and this is the wonderful Alo Robert. Um, it really is somewhere you've just to come and uh, just explore because it is an absolute Aladdin's cave. And it's also got a very big cat. Look at this. The problem is knowing actually where to start. Where do you want to start, Mr. Boo? Should we start on the left over here yes. in the bar? Yes. Have you seen this amazing valise with its chest of drawers in it and special hanging zone? And if 
you happen to collect Eiffel Towers, there's a full set of Eiffel Towers over here. Gorgeous is that for your roast beef. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. Fabulous, look, this is a table from the Hotel Martinez in Cannes. Wow, it's been when they did it up. Wonderful old Sputnik type light up here, which I, I've got a version of this with the sort of 70s table tennis balls on the end of it. Really have to clamber because if you come up here, some more steps are on a whole other level and there's telephones and bureaus and then we're into a sort of 60s, 70s vibe over here, which is fabulous. Love all this stuff. This fantastic old telephone. Wowza. They don't make them like that anymore. So back out into the main hall again because we're gonna take you further into the back now where we get into an incredible sort of garden furniture. And then there's a whole upstairs area with sort of, well, there were whole shops in there. I like that Hotel Victoria Beaulieu sur Mer sign up there. The fantastic period exercise bike here, look at this. And what is absolutely amazing about this place is A, just how eclectic it is, but B, the level of quality, I think, is because there are so few pieces that are uninteresting. It really isn't a junkyard. It might look like it, but it's not, because in the end, they've got a bit of taste. And if you come through here, you're right out into the back garden. Um, it can get incredibly hot in here. If you come in winter, bring a coat, because it's quite cool, but the sun's coming out now. And uh, it really is perhaps a bit more junky out here, although look at that old bit of, uh, looks like a fairground ride or a swing, a children's swing. But then if you look up here, you've got more rooms in these other buildings. And that's where we're gonna head up to now if it's still open. It's been a while since we've been, but hopefully it will be. Right, let's try and get upstairs and see if they've got these old uh, shop fittings and stuff up here that were amazing last time we were here. These stairs are new. Wow, furniture in here. Just look at this uh, chair set, Mr. Brew. Right, let's go up into the other room with the shop fittings. Oh yes, they're all still here. Fantastic. Oh. I love this. Do you think he's come from outside of boulangerie or something? Yeah, or maybe. a butcher's, maybe. Or maybe, yeah, butcher, the butcher's trousers. <laughs> maybe the bar belonged to the Bouvet Syndical. Five billiards, entree free. I'd like this sign for my properties. I could put this outside. Whose property empire could have hotel shelf? Does that mean air conditioned or heated? Heated. Yeah. Heated. It needs it in here. It's a bit cold. Look at this. You can get a, you can rent a baby weighing scale, and uh, crutches, and mechanical beds. Wow! Look at that. Crutches, false legs, Mr. Boo stab vest. And a, and a baby, looks like a baby coffin, is it? It's a scale of weighing your baby. Oh, <laughs> and a wheelchair. It's all going on in this shop. And for when we're not on the trottinette, I found another way of getting round. These speedy roller skates. Oh, they're a cracking pair, look at them. Do you think you can put a battery on them? And a motor? Probably. Speedy, champion du monde. Yeah, ski section, look at the sledges, that is. 
you'd have had to have some very solid snow. I had, I had a sledge like that when I was a kid. It used to sink. It used to sink in the slush. I used to get really upset with it. My friends had those plastic ones, you know, that, were, that just slid along the snow, and they were me with my proper toboggan, and I'd just end up in the mud. It's things like that that, you know, they, they stay with you, don't they? Childhood failures. Fantastic look, a rubberized trippery sign. So that's from a but butcher's trippery where they sell the tripe, the innards. That lady's bottom over there, what do they sell? I don't think it was innards. What? There it is, Vandela Fanny. You heard it here first, folks. Fanny wine? Or do you think that was the name of the brand? I hope so. Hotel Rabini in Monton. Could be, yeah. Hotel Rabini Old Switchboard. To be what's down here. Oh, some wibbly wobbly steps. Crockery and, ooh, we, stuff. weird babies, weird dolls. Donc, je vous le vous demander, vous êtes ici de, depuis combien de temps 24 ans. 24 ans. 24 ans. Et c'était quoi ici avant C'était une menuiserie. Ah ok, avec du bois. Euh, avec du bois. Ils entre... vendaient du, 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 du bois pour construire le mobilier, du bois, du gros bois, du, un peu de tout, quoi, de, les et, découpes. Et avant, vous étiez genre collectionneur. Euh... Collectionneur. Ouais, c'est ça. <rire> collectionneur de, de tous euh... de, de, de pas mal d'objets j'ai eu l'opportunité avec un ami euh, de monter cette brocante il y a 24 ans donc qu'est ce que vous pensez c'est le, le truc le plus bizarre ou euh, unique que vous avez vendu ou que vous avez trouvé ici le plus bizarre le plus bizarre euh... oh, okay. Et le plus bizarre, un lit, un lit rond. Un lit rond. Qui tournait. Waouh! Des années 70, tout en velours rouge, 3 mètres de large. Oh, ça, c'est euh, rare, j'imagine. C'était rare. Surtout très curieux. Ouais. Il est super euh, addict aux tous euh, les affiches et tous les euh, types oui. qui est signe. C'est toi qui aimes ça aussi. Hein. Oui, oui, les affiches. Ouais. C'est oui. bien tout ce qui est publicité ancienne. Oui. En affiche, en papier ou en émail, j'aime beaucoup. Et en lumière aussi, le, les ah, trucs lumière. tabac. Et, ouais. voilà. et un des questions les plus importantes, oui. pourquoi s'appelle Allo Robert quand vous êtes Patrick Ah, parce que ça s'appelle Allo Robert. Allo Robert, c'est parce que quand j'étais collectionneur avec mon ami, on partait la nuit chinée et on avait un autre ami qui ne pouvait pas venir avec nous. Il nous téléphonait en pleine nuit pour nous dire alors, vous avez trouvé quelque chose et pour lui, des fois, de temps en temps, on trouvait quelque chose et on lui revendait, comme ça. Et un jour, en revenant de Chine, on dit « la boutique, comment on va l'appeler ?»« On va l'appeler Allo Robert parce que c'est lui qui nous a fait gagner la première fois de l'argent. » Tout simplement. Parfait. Mais ça n'a rien à voir avec moi. Ni non. À... <rire> There, what a treat that was. And we're now going to go and look at two restaurants. We're only going to eat in one of them, but we have two options. One that we found and then one that Patrick just suggested, which we're going to check out, nosy through the window and decide which to go to. But his sounds quite a nice local traditional tip. So let's see. Look at this absolutely wonderful church here, just on the outskirts of the old town. Fantastic. Tons and tons of restaurants down here, but because it's still uh, early in the year, many of them are still closed. I imagine they'll reopen for the Lemon Festival and then run through. But January is quite often a time when, understandably, the restaurants around here shut up shop. They have a month off. Here's the, the restaurant that Patrick suggested. Let's see whether there's something we fancy on the menu. It's called the Pity Corner, and it's, uh, well, it's on a corner. But um, it looks very lovely, but it, I don't know whether it's got the stuff we fancy. Let's see. It looks very nice, but it's a bit sort of sandwiches and snacky more than, uh, more than a meal. We want, a, we want a lunch. 
Let's see, we've heard about this place up here that does a three course set for quite reasonable. Let's see what it's like. So this is the place we're fancying in the sun. Can we get a table in the sun? Let's see. Piggy's been a bit impatient for her lunch. Um, did you notice Mr. Monsieur Patrick, mm. uh, when, we in, when I introduced him to Twiggy, he said, oh, she looks just like Twiggy. And it's rare. Yeah, he, it's rare for French people to necessarily click straight away. Oh, you mean Twiggy the model Twiggy. It's true, because most times they say Piggy, don't they? Right. Miss Piggy. Miss Piggy. <laughs> it's a bit sad. Cheers, Mr. Boo. Cheers. To Allo Robert. Allo Robert. The finest emporium of antiques. Mmm, fruity. Fruity. You got Mr. Boo. Are you ready for my big reveal? I have got Moo Freet. Oh, a classique. Mussels and chips. Can't go wrong with mussels and chips, can you? No, not at all. We'll soon find out. Are they just plain mussels? Moo Marnie? Moo Marnie. White Marnier. wine and onion. White wine and pasta. And no onion. Mm, no, no, not so. No. Nice. Mm. Lovely. Very, very fresh. Ooh, didn't you just caught them? Very possibly. Mmm. Another chip. They look like classic French fries. Very, very thin. Yum, yum. What have you got? Well, I thought I'd do a reveal too because I've gone for something that's so French. In fact, actually, it's more French than you'd imagine, even though it is, I think technically a Spanish dish, but it's served a lot down here at festivals, village parties, all kinds of things. It is classic paella. There we go. So here we have paella. We've all seen paella before. Let's see what it tastes like. Got some nice moules at the top, bit of yours. Mm, lovely with the lemon, really nice with lemon. Twiggy, stop clambering up my leg. And then your big rice. Sounds oh, lovely. And then a nice big piece of, I'm guessing, chicken here. I can find my um, knife, complex stuff, paella. You notice my Spanish pronunciation, paella. That's a nice bit of chicken there. Nice bit of chicken skin, very sinful. Let's have a taste of that. Nice, clean, and then a big gambas and a little bit of chorizo, chorizo sausage. Can have a bit of chorizo and mool. Mmm, lovely, perfect, light lunch. Well, that wasn't bad. All in all, that came to with uh, two mains and uh, the wine, which was a little bit on the pricier side for house wine at 17. That came to a grand total of 53 euros. So um, a nice light lunch. Um, it's a great place to sit. Um, definitely more, I'd say, at the tourist end of things, though there were lots of locals there because, as I say, there's not a lot of places open. But um, anyway, we're now headed back to Elton via the fairground, via the preparations for the Lemon Festival, which is coming up very soon. And, uh, we're going to bid you a font farewell from Monton. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like, please give us a comment, please think about buying us a coffee, help support these trips and pays for the Moule Marnier. And uh, remember, stay charged. Bye.